Hello, everyone. I'm going to present a, a challenging case of a patient with psoriasis and cancer. And I would start uh, straight on with a, a patient who is a male, 62 year old. He is a smoker of one pack per day with a history of severe alcohol abuse until 2015. And the patient has had psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis for 20 years and was treated initially with methotrexate and then until May 2019 with Ixekizumab at another hospital. Uh, at that time, on December, he uh, uh, consulted to his physician because of a uh, uh, dysphonia of two months and cervical lymph node enlargement. And uh, a diagnosis of a squamous cell carcinoma of the hypopharynx uh, was, uh, was made with uh, its uh, PT4N3B, the invasion of the left hemilarynx and right lotus plus lymph nodes. And uh, uh, an emergency tracheostomy was done, uh, biopsy confirmed the diagnosis, and the patient was uh, so, uh, so, uh, so underwent uh, radical surgery and started radiotherapy. And uh, the patient uh, came on April uh, with extensive psoriasis. Uh, we got uh, an, in, in, a, the, a treatment, we started the treatment with acetrazine with initial transient improvement, but the pro cancer uh, progressed uh, with uh, lymph plus additional lymph node metastasis and lung metastasis. Uh, pharyngocutaneous fistula developed and the patient started on carboplatin, which was an effective. Then paclitaxel and cetuximab. And in the meantime, he came back uh, with a worsening of his psoriasis. We started, uh, we tried uh, adding photochemotherapy uh, to acetrotin and this was a failure. So on April uh, 21, the patient had a passive of uh, 40 with 70% of his body surface area involved. Uh, we did a screening for uh, considering the possibility to start a biologic. Uh, the quantiform was negative. The patient had severe anemia, hypothyroidism, thyroidism, and we started Guzelkumab. And a few days later, uh, because of the appearance of a mediastinic metastasis and progression of his lung metastasis, the patient started on nivolumab. And then after uh, three doses of Uzalcomab, the patient became completely clear. Well, this is uh, just uh, to discuss the situation of this patient. This was uh, the appearance of the patient when he came to see us. You can see here the uh, extensive involvement of his uh, skin, the hyperkeratosis of the, uh, of the palms, plants, and fingers. You can see also signs of uh, his uh, peripheral uh, psoriatic arthritis. And now some considerations uh, we, we uh, uh, under, uh, entertained when uh, deciding the treatment for this patient. First consideration is that the, the risk of cancer in patients with psoriasis is increased. And the main factors associated with that are uh, alcohol and tobacco consumption as in this patient. And it is, uh, we must know that uh, having uh, psoriasis as a matter of fact, uh, worsens the psoriasis uh, of the, the prognosis of cancer in patients hospitalized for psoriasis. It's a, a bit uh, a, a old uh, a study, but shows this uh, increased risk uh, or increased uh, uh, worse prognosis of uh, uh, cancer in patients with psoriasis. And uh, we know that methotrexate might uh, in be associated with the appearance of uh, squamous cell carcinomas. Uh, there's a threefold increase in melanomas, a five-fold in non-Kochkin lymphoma, and a three-fold increase in lung cancer. This comes from uh, Australian registry. So uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, methoxate is contraindicated in, for treatment of patients uh, with uh, cancer and psoriasis. On the other hand, uh, we know that uh, uh, based on uh, clinical uh, uh, trials, uh, there's no evidence of any increased risk of uh, neoplasms, patients treated with biologicals. And from registries, even though most registries uh, uh, include patients treated mostly with anti tnf alpha agents, not the, those of the biologics uh, which have been introduced uh, uh, more recently, but we know that uh, there are at least uh, one uh, uh, registry that uh, shows an increased risk of a Malignancy, that's a squamous cell carcinomas, exclusively with TNF alpha inhibitors after 12 months after the start of treatment. So we must take that into consideration too. 
uh, this this is the, uh, the, the 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 detail of the data of the from this study. You can see that the the, the risk ratio is increased by approximately uh, two as regards uh, the, the possibility of uh, squamous cell carcinoma in those patients. The other uh, cancers do not have a significant increase in this uh, in this registry. Well, uh, the association or the, the role of different cytokines and malignancy is uh, something that miss, we must review in these cases. And in my opinion, the, the role of tumor necrosis factor is a bit too complicated because we, it has a, 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 a an ominous name, tumor necrosis factor. Nobody wants to uh, block something that uh, induces the, ne the necrosis of tumors. But on the other hand, we know that, that the inflammation driven by tumor necrosis factor contributes to the tumor development. And this is more complicated because there's a pleiotropic role of a transmembrane soluble uh, tumor necrosis factor and also lymphotoxin alpha, which depends on the different uh, receptors to which tumor necrosis factor can bind. On the other hand, we know that the, the, uh, the blockade of tumor necrosis factor has been used in patients who develop uh, resistance or refractoriness to immune checkpoint inhibitors. And on the other hand, in patients who develop autoimmune manifestations or, or, or uh, complications of uh, checkpoint inhibitors, anti-tumor necrosis factors have been used with uh, good success. But they have a, a personal history in this regard. So I, I had uh, one patient a long time ago, uh, he was uh, treated, uh, had been treated with Evalizumab, who because of a severe erythrodermic psoriasis, uh, he had had several episodes of erythrodermic psoriasis, was uh, started on Infliximab and everything seemed to go well, but the patient started to develop uh, several squamous cell carcinomas, small ones, and uh, we were uh, not concerned about that, the easy to treat, but uh, of course the patient had been exposed to plenty of uh, puba. The patient also was a, a, a smoker, but uh, we con kept on uh, treating this patient with infliximab because of the good response. You can see here the complete clearance of his uh, uh, skin lesions. And then more squamous cell carcinomas continued to appear until in, at one control, the patient uh, commented that we had added a bit of metodic said that the, he had a right neck pain uh, for three weeks, uh, which was irradiated to an arm. So I suspected something. So there might be uh, something in there. We asked for an uh, X, uh, chest X-ray and there was, a, you can see here, this pancos tumor. Uh, it was confirmed to be uh, a, a, a large cell adenocarcinoma uh, but with involvement of the chest wall, the mediastinum, and a paratracheal node. And the patient was started on paclitaxel and carboplatin and radiotherapy that was, were available at that time. And luckily enough, the patient became in complete remission after six months. Uh, we must take into account that these additional risk factors uh, in this patient were is being heavy smoker and having latent tuberculosis, which might have induced a scar. But on the other hand, uh, the, this I never can uh, avoid uh, to, to think that uh, perhaps uh, this uh, um, appearance of uh, squamous cell carcinomas might have been a warning sign, and perhaps anti-TNF alpha uh, uh, the, the, uh, treatment might have contributed to the development or the progression of his disease. But on the other hand, uh, we must consider interleukin-17. We know that interleukin-17 mediated inflammation promotes tumor growth and progression in the skin. And there are several uh, mice models in which uh, uh, the, the deficiency of interleukin-17 receptor makes them resistant uh, to uh, for wall ester uh, induced carcinogenesis. And uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, this uh, uh, the making uh, blocking the uh, interleukin-17 abrogates uh, the progression of the promotion of these tumors. And uh, this is a, a very good model that shows that this uh, blockade uh, it prevents the, the appearance of further tumors in this uh, experimental model. And uh, there's a, a lot of evidence nowadays that the interleukin-17 stimulates the proliferation of the skin, uh, of the epidermal stem cells. And as a matter of fact, if the, some of these stem cells become mutated, uh, this uh, can contribute uh, to uh, the, uh, the, the, the progression, the, it links the clinical growth factor, and also the inflammation contributes to the, uh, to the invasion, to the metastasis uh, of, these, uh, uh, of, of tumors originated at least in the skin. And it, uh, it, it is, uh, there are plenty, this is a good review that there's, uh, 
large evidence that interleukin-17 may promote the tumor progression and also contribute to the resistance uh, to checkpoint inhibitors. So it might make sense uh, to blockade uh, IL-17 and to contribute uh, in this uh, way to the treatment of psoriasis in patients with cancer. And there have been several uh, studies. The first, the first uh, case uh, uh, corresponded to a patient with a, a metastatic colon cancer uh, who was uh, started was treated with pembrolizumab and following the third cycle, uh, the, present, the patient developed an extensive uh, psoriasis plus arthralgias and also, uh, 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 also uh, the, this, uh, this inflammatory colitis. So patient was started on segukinumab and the response was very good, but the authors noted that the patient uh, uh, presented progression or perhaps a loss of uh, the effect of pembrolizumab. So this is something that must be taken with uh, caution. Uh, eventually, two more uh, uh, papers have appeared. In one of them, the response was uh, very good and there was no uh, interference with the effect of the checkpoint inhibitors. And on the other, uh, the response was very good again, but uh, it was lost after some time. And eventually the patient was uh, treated with hustekinumab. And uh, what about interleukin-23? Well, interleukin-23 is uh, known to be a, a, a tumor-promoting cytokine, and it's, it is uh, even uh, associated with uh, prognosis. And there are several models that uh, suggest that uh, interleukin-23 uh, the, the deficient mice uh, present a decreased tumor progression in a colorectal cancer model, for instance. So it might be that interleukin-23 inhibitors might be used in this, uh, in this setting. On the other hand, its central regulatory role of, uh, of uh, IL-23 means that uh, many other pathways, uh, which might be important in terms of uh, uh, anti-infections or, or uh, protection, immune protection against infections, are not uh, uh, blocked by blocking IL-23. And there's evidence that by neutralizing uh, interleukin-23, we are able to uh, de de eliminate residual tumor cells, whereas if we deplete interleukin-12, the opposite is, uh, uh, is produced. So it seems uh, quite likely that the blockade of interleukin-12 might be harmful, whereas the blockade of interleukin-23 might be beneficial. So I would prefer using an, a specific P19 antagonist rather than an ustekinumab in my patients, just based on theoretical considerations. On the other hand, there's evidence that uh, the, the uh, mice which uh, uh, have uh, deleted uh, P19 uh, present uh, uh, a decreased uh, um, uh, appearance of uh, papillomas in this carcinogenesis model. So, and in many cancers, there is an increase of interleukin-23, and this overexpression uh, is uh, likely to be associated also with uh, prognosis. So, this is there are several uh, uh, factors that uh, might uh, appeal us to use interleukin-23 antagonists or blockers in those patients. And this is what we did in these patients. Uh, we must uh, remember that uh, we uh, started Puzelcumab treatment. You can see here that uh, after uh, three months, the, the passive was almost completely uh, cleared. Body surface area involved, uh, so it just was just uh, 1%. And this is, uh, to some extent, uh, the, the lesson or the, 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 the take-home message that uh, we can uh, uh, obtained from this uh, case presentation. You can see here, patient is almost completely cleared. Uh, no uh, relapse or no uh, symptoms of his arthritis. arthritis. Here's the, the fistula we were talking about. And as a final consideration, we must remember that the checkpoint inhibitors can trigger or worsen psoriasis. And whenever these, uh, uh, these uh, manifestations appear, if they are uh, intestinal, perhaps anti dnf alpha agents or anti-interleukin-23, ustekinumab is also uh, uh, indicated, perhaps even uh, guzelcumab or uh, uzenkinzumab might be used. Whereas if the, the psoriasis is the, is the um, uh, manifestation or the autoimmune disease, which which is uh, worsened or triggered by checkpoint inhibitors, perhaps IL-17 blockade might be the option of choice. And uh, there's a, this uh, paper uh, pro uh, proposes uh, a, a rather a 
parsimonious and, and cautious proposal in, in psoriasis flares for patients are treated with checkpoint inhibitors because of their cancer. And uh, they start with acetylene, then photochemotherapy, then it, take, it takes a long time. And perhaps since anti-interleukins are safe, especially as regards infectious complications, uh, when we think about uh, P19 antagonists, and then can also uh, somehow prevent, at least theoretically, the progression of recurrence of neoplasms. And they may, may overcome the checkpoint inhibitor resistance, uh, perhaps these would be the drugs of choice in those patients. Thank you very much.